All right, so this is section 6.4, functions. Um, the first thing is, what does a function look like? A function looks like a graph, of course, but there's something also kind of special about what a function looks like. Here's one example of a function. We have a straight line. Here's another example of a function. We have a table of values of this straight line. So negative 2, comma 3. And also we could convert these this table of values into a series of points. Negative 2, 3. Oops. Uh, negative 1, 1. 0, negative 1. And 1, negative 3. Here we have a table of values, the graph, and a series of points. All these are examples of what a function looks like. Um, we could also say, okay, well, what's the equation of this graph? Well, I could say, well, the equation of the graph could be y equals, let me see here, it's got a slope of negative 2 over 1, x minus 1. So here's the equation. Okay, we'll get into slopes and stuff later. You're not required to, to solve this. So right now we have functions. That's what a function looks like. It looks like a straight line. It could look like a table of values. It could look like a bunch of points or an equation. But what if it's a bit more complex? What if I'm giving you these two things? I'm saying, which graph is a function? Is this one a function? Is that one a function? Are they both functions? Well, they're both pictures of graphs, which is a good start. The first one passes what is called the vertical, whoops, vertical line test. Okay? It must pass. And what the vertical line test says is that it only can cut in one spot. by cutting only one point. So the first one, if I take a vertical line and I cut through the graph, it cuts through there. If I cut through over here, it cuts through right there. If I cut through here, it cuts through there. So that one passes. So we say, yes, it is a function. Notice the table of values, though. Negative 2, comma, negative 2. So we got negative 2, comma, negative 2. I got negative 1, comma, 1. Negative 1, comma, 1. 0, comma, 2. 1, comma, 1. And 2, comma, negative 2. Notice that I have a negative 2 there. And I also have a negative 2 up there. Now, they are both the same values, but because they're in my y column, that's OK, because the vertical line is not going to pass through both the points. Neg this negative 2 is way over here. This negative 2 is way over here. Now, let's see what happens on this one. If I cut through some lines here, uh-oh, I cut through there and there. That's not good. How about over here? Whoops, cut through there and there. Notice that on this graph, it fails. So we say, no, it's not a function. When I'm looking at my table of values, I have negative 2, comma, 0, which is that point there. Then I have negative 1, comma, 1. But I also have negative 1, comma, negative 1. Notice I have two x values there. And similarly for 2 comma 2 and 2 negative 2, I have two x values there. So if you weren't given the graph, if you were just given the table of values and you're looking through the x column and you see more than one of the same value, you know it's going to fail because it's going to have this type of idea where it's going to fail the vertical line test. You have two x values on the same vertical line. That's bad. So bad and that's okay. Two y values in the same, if you're looking through the y column or along your y values, if you get two the same, that's okay. But the x column, the first column, if you come across two of the same, it fails. Okay, that's important. So if you're given the given a, a picture of a graph, 
you can just do the vertical line. If you're given a table of values, you have to kind of look through the columns and see is my are there more than one value in my y? Are there more than one value in my x? And see if it passes that way. That's it for how to figure out if it's a function. Vertical line test, check to see are there the same x values, are the same y values, and you can say yes or no. Second half of this lesson, function notation. So here we have function notation f of x equals ax plus b. This is not multiplication, not multiplied. Oops. Not multiplied. Okay. It's not multiplication. It means f of x. f of x. This here is multiplication. It's a times x plus b. It could be some kind of a function, right? Some type of equation. But when you have this type of thing here, it's not multiplication. So given this f of x equals 3x plus 1, basically what's inside the brackets is what my variable is. So here, in this case, it's x. There's my x there. If I want to find f of 4, what do I have? Well, I have my value inside the brackets is 4. That's my variable x. So that means that x is equal to 4. And I plug it into my equation. So now I'm finding f of 4, not f times 4. This is not f times 4. This is f of 4. And f of 4 means what happens when I plug a 4 into my x. So my x value now becomes a 4. Well, I get 12 plus 1, which is equal to 13. So that means that f of 4 is equal to 13. That means that when my x value is equal to 4, my f of value, or my y value, is going to be equal to 13. Right? So in terms of a graph, when my x value is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, my y value is going to be up at 13. That's a point on my graph. So the f of x value, the whole thing, is kind of like my y, or my vertical axis, right? My dependent variable. We can see that y, the f of x, depends on whatever I plug into x. Second one here, what about f of 1 third? Okay, well, let's try it. f of 1 third equals, now again, Whatever I see inside the brackets, that's what I'm plugging in for x. So it can, it's going to become 3 times a third plus 1. 3 times a third is just 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So f of a third is equal to 2. Again, if I was looking at a graph of this, this means that when I have an x value of a third, 1 would be up here somewhere then my y value is equal to 2. It's an actual point on my graph. When my x value is equal to third, my y value is equal to 2. Okay, So these actually have their basis in graphs, which is why they're in this section in the first place. Okay, So whatever you see inside the brackets, that's what you replace with x. Okay. What if I added a third one on here? Let's switch it up a bit. What if I put f of um, a plus b? Uh-oh. Now I got no letters, or no numbers, I mean. They're all letters. So one, two, three. If I have f of a plus b, remember that whatever is inside the brackets is what I put in place of x. So that means it's going to be 3. I'm going to replace x with a plus b plus 1. If I distribute that out, I get 3a plus 3b plus 1. And that's it. I can't do anything more with that because I have too many variables. But I'm just doing that to show you that whatever is inside the brackets is what I put inside the brackets and replace x with, even it's, if it's a binomial, even if it's two terms added together. If it is two terms added together, what did I have to do? I had to multiplied out. I didn't change the multiplication, but I had to distribute it. All right. 
Last example. Given, here's my function, find k if h of k is equal to 22. Now this time, I'm replacing h of k, which is this h of k. So instead of putting a value in for k, I'm plugging a value in for the whole thing. So that means I'm replacing it entirely with 22. Equals 5. What am I putting in for k? Am I putting 22? No. I'm leaving k, k. It hasn't changed. Because this tells you, find k. So I'm not solving for h of k, I'm actually solving for k this time. So now it's just algebra. Add 2. Add 2. So I get 24 equals 5k. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. So k is equal to 24 over 5. You could convert that to a decimal if you wanted to. Okay, that's part one. Second example, what if h of k is equal to 102? So again, I replace h of k, the whole thing, with 102. What about k? Well, k stays k. We haven't plugged anything into it. This k hasn't changed, that k doesn't change. This k didn't change, so that k didn't change. What did change was the h of k. And it's 5k minus 2. So I get 102, I subtract off 2, I get 100 is equal to 5k. I divide by 5, I get k is equal to 20. So that is how to solve for the variable on the other side if you're given the value of the whole thing. Sorry about that. Um, and we also did plugging the value into x or into the independent or the dependent variable. The independent variable and solving for the dependent variable. And that's how you do function notation.